Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we will discuss the law number 23 of the international bestseller book of Robert Greene, The 48 Laws of Power. So law number 23 says that concentrate your forces. Conserve your forces and energies by keeping them concentrated at their strongest point. You gain more by finding a rich mine and mining it deeper than by splitting from one shallow mine to another. Intensity defeats extensity every time. When looking for sources of power to elevate you, find the one key patron, the fat cow who will give you milk for a long time to come. The world is plagued by greater and greater division within countries, political groups, families, even individuals. We are all in a state of total distraction and diffusion, hardly able to keep our minds in one direction before we are pulled in a thousand others. The modern world's level of conflict is higher than ever, and we have internalized it in our own lives. The solution is a form of retreat inside ourselves to the past to more concentrated forms of thought and action. Napoleon knew the value of concentrating your forces at the enemy's weakest spot. It was the secret of his success on the battlefield, but his willpower and his mind were equally modeled on, his, on this notion single-mindedness of purpose, total concentration on the goal and the use of these qualities against people less focused, people in a state of distraction, such an arrow will find it mark every time and overwhelm the enemy. Casanova attributed his success in life to his ability to concentrate on a single goal and push at it until it yielded. It was his ability to give himself over completely to the woman he desired that made him so intensely seductive. seductive. For the weeks or months that one of these women lived in his orbit, he thought of no one else. When he was Im imprisoned in the traitorous leads of the dog, palace in the Venice, a prison from which no one had ever escaped. He concentrated his mind on the single goal of escape. Day after day, a change, single goal, day after day, a change of cells, uh, which mean that months of digging had all been for naught, did not discourage him. He persisted and eventually escaped have always believed he later wrote that when a man gets it into his head to do something and when he exclusively occupies himself in that design he must succeed whatever the difficulties that man will become grand vizier or pope in the world of power you will constantly need help from other people usually those more powerful than you the fool flits from one person to another, believing that he will survive by spreading himself out. It is a corollary of the law of concentration, however, that much energy is saved and more power is attained by affixing yourself to a single appropriate source of power. The scientist Nikola, Tes Nikola Tesla ruined himself by believing that he somehow maintained his independence by not having to serve a single master. He even turned down J.P. Morgan who offered him a rich contract. In the end, in the end Tesla's independence meant that he could depend on no single patron but was always having to Today, up to a dozen of them later in his life, realized his mistake. In the end, the sing in the end, the single patron appreciate your loyalty and becomes de dependent on your services in the long run. The master serves the slave. 
finally power itself always exists in concentrated forms in any organization it is inevitable for small group to hold the strings and often it is not those with the titles you must find out who controls the operations who is the real director behind the scenes scenes as at richel you discovered at the beginning of his rise to the top of the french political scene during the early 17th 17th century it was king louis who decided things it was the king's mother and so he attached himself to her catapulted through the ranks of the countries all the way to the top it is enough to strike oil once your wealth and power are assured for a lifetime law number 24 play the perfect courtier the perfect courtier thrives in a world where everything revolves around power and political dexterity he has mastered the art of indirections he flatters yield to super superiors and assert power over other in the most oblique and graceful manner learn and apply the laws of court courtiership and there will be no limit to how far you can rise in you can rise in the court the laws of court politics it is never pretend to prattle on about yourself or call too much attention to your actions the more you talk about your deeds and more suspicion you cause you are also stir up enough envy among your peers to induce treachery and backstabbing practice non challenge never seem to be working too hard your talent must appear to flow naturally with an ease that makes people take you for a genius rather than a workaholic it is better for them to marvel at how gracefully you have achieved your accomplishment than to wonder why it took so much work be frugal with flattery it may seem that your superiors cannot get enough flattery but too much of even a good thing loses its value learn to flatter indirectly by downplaying your own contribution for example to make your master look better arrange to be noticed there is a paradox you cannot display yourself too branch branchly yet you must also get yourself noticed you stand no chance of rising if the ruler does not notice you in the swamp of countries this task requires much art it is often initially initially a matter of being seen in the literal sense pay attention to your physical appearance then and find a way to create distinctive and a sub subtly distinctive style and image should sudo believe in equality the idea that talking and acting the same way with everyone no matter what their rank make you somehow a paragon of paragon of civilization is a terrible mistake those below you will take it as a form of condescension which it is and those above you will be often although they may not admit it you must change your style and your way of speaking to suit each person this is not lying it is acting and acting is an art not a gift from god never be the bearer of bad news the king kills the messenger who brings bad news this is a click but there is truth to it you must struggle and if necessary lie and cheat to be sure that lot of bearer of bad news falls on a colleague never on you never affect friendliness and intimacy with your master he does not want a friend for a subordinate he wants a sub he wants a subordinate never approach him in an as easy friendly way or act as if you are on the best of term than his prerogative prerogative 
never criticize those above you directly this may seems obvious but there are often times when some sort of criticism is necessary to say nothing or to give no advice would open you to risk of another shot you must learn however to couch your ad advice and critici criticism as indirectly and as politely as possible be frugal in asking those above you for favors nothing irritates a master more than having to reject someone's respect re request it stir up guilt and resentment ask for favors as rarely as rarely as possible and know when to stop most important do not ask for favors on another person behalf least of all friends never joke about appearances or taste a lively wit and humorous disposition are essential qualities for a good courtier and there are times when vulgarity is appropriate and engage engaging but avoid any kind of joke about appearance or taste to highly sensitive areas especially with those above you do not be coat cynic express admiration for the good work of others if you constantly criticize your equals or subordinates some of that criticism will rub off on you hovering over you like a gray cloud when wherever you go people will groan at each new cynical comment and you will irritate them by expressing modest admiration for other people achievements you paradoxically call attention to your own be self observant the mirror is a miraculous invention without it you would commit great sins against beauty and decorum you also need a mirror for your action this can sometimes come from other people telling you what they see in you but that is not the most trustworthy method you must be the mirror training your mind to try to see yourself as others see you are you acting too obsequious are you trying too hard to please be observant about yourself and you will avoid a mountain of blunders great play you must learn to cry and laugh on command and when it is appropriate you must be able both to discuss your your anger and frustration and fake your contentment and agreement you must be the master of your own face fit the spirit of the times a slight aff uh, affection of a past era can be charming as long as you choose a period at la at least 20 years back wearing the fashions of 10 years ago is ludicrous unless you enjoy the role of court Jester, your spirit and way of thinking must keep up with the times, even if the times often your sensibilities. Be too forward thinking, however, and no one will understand you. Be a source of pleasure. This is critical. It is. It is an obvious law of human nature that we will flee what unpleasant and distasteful while charm and other. and the promise of delight will draw us like moths to a flame there are degree to this not everyone can play role of favorite for not everyone is blessed with charm and wit but we can all control our unpleasant qualities and obscure them when necessary